All right, before we get going, good to see everybody. Um, Emma has a bit of team news for you. Um, Kat Macario um, will not be part of the Olympic roster. Um, she has minor knee irritation, which means that she won't recover in time for the games. And I think considering you know, everything that Kat's been through, um, it's important she goes back to Chelsea um, and she will not be available for the Olympics. Lynn Williams will move from an alternate into the 18 and Emily Sams will move into becoming one of the alternates. And just important to mention that this is not official yet because we've got to submit all the paperwork. So it's pending approval by the IOC, USOPC and FIFA, but that's the move that's going to be made. Should we wait for everyone to finish their tweet before we get to the questions? Meg wins. Um, do we have mics or no? We do. All right, questions for uh, Emma. Go ahead, Meg. Just to follow up on that news, Emma, in terms of what Lynn Williams now adds to this 18 as she was originally an alternate, I was just hoping that you could maybe elucidate what you think yeah. might change for this uh, 18 strategy that you had originally planned. To be honest with you, nothing, because I always viewed it as 22 and with the rule changes as such, um, absolutely nothing changes. What does change is that without CAT is I have to think about some different permutations for the team, which I've already reflected on. And for us, it's about now looking towards that and, um, you know, making sure that everybody else knows what those adjustments might be. And I think, you know, I, I want to say that I'm absolutely gutted for Kat, um, someone I've worked hard with in the last 12 months. She's really put a shift in to get there, but it's not to be. And, um, you know, I know the team um, certainly want to give her our best support, but also... This is an opportunity for someone else. Emily Sams has been training the last two days, but again, I know I get asked this question a lot. I've been watching players the whole year, so she's, for me, been a top performer in the league and someone who's been outstanding in the last two training sessions and someone who's got the ability to play both fullback, centre-back, and that will give us some other options elsewhere. Up front here. You pick, Ellie. Angie Jones, Believe Network. Thanks, Aaron. Emma, um, when you made the decision in, with Kat, was it like this morning? And when did she start feeling like pain in the sneaks right now with this new unfortunate element for her? Thank you. Well, she trained the other day, but she had had some irritation leading up to that, and it reacted. And having been through the last 12 months with her, I know that there is... You know, it's complex, so her welfare comes first. And as I said, she's done everything she can and she's devastated. Um, but it's not a long-term situation, just not going to recover in time for the Olympics. Jonathan. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, I'm Jonathan Tannenbaum of the Philadelphia Inquirer. With the attacking midfield depth where Kat had been listed as a midfielder. Yeah. Rose is there, obviously, but you're now down a midfielder. Who are your candidates if you need somebody extra in that area to go in there? And with Lynn, she was an alternate in, in 21 also, and then the rules changed, and then she's Correct. an alternate this time. What have your conversations been like her, a veteran player who's in that alternate situation twice now, and what that says to you about her willingness to do it? Um, well, first of all, if you know the way I develop teams, I'll always have a solution, firstly. Secondly, the challenge of, of making um, that work is one that I enjoy, and I know I will. I think when it comes to Lynn, we had a really great chat last night, to be honest with you. It was lovely. In fact, I made people wait an extra half an hour that were outside the door, not players, I might add staff, because we were having such a good chit-chat about the differences between millennials and Generation Z and how they use the heart emoji 
like <laughs> she, she said it's got like more of a downward heart emoji that apparently the youngest generation uses. I did not know that. Is that generation? <laughs> oh, I've got it. It's got beyond me. But we had a really lovely conversation. She made a lovely recommendation for a restaurant across the street that I went to with my family on our day off. Um, listen, I'm sort of, I'm straight up person and she's a straight up person. Um, so it works really well. And... We've been really honest from the get-go. She's been a delight to be around. She's, I told her this last night, she seems really calm. Um, she's been here before, and I think because she's been here before, she's calm and can handle whatever's there. She will always remind me her job is to make my life difficult. I've got a six-year-old. There's no way she can make it more difficult than him sometimes. Um, so I look forward to the challenge. Um, but I also have challenged her to use that experience to make sure she uh, raises the bar. And I know we're both excited to work together. Jeff. Jeff Kasufi, ESPN. Emma, um, now that you've got the week together uh, with the team, um, what, what do you hope to see in terms of progression in that, that sort of larger plan that you've had uh, in this game against Mexico? Well, for me, it's all elements of the game. Like, have we added another layer to our attacking play? Have we improved in, you know, our defensive responsibilities? Are we taking the next step with our transition responsibilities? And are we able to be even more efficient from our set pieces? So it's the game that we're looking for and gradual growth with that. Uh, for me, is the priority, our tactical objectives uh, in those areas. And second of all, just to, you know, keep developing, I think, the mentality that, that we need and, you know, performances that uh, are consistent. Good, Nancy. Hey, I'm Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, the 99ers are going to be honored this weekend. Yeah. What do you remember about that game? And spinning forward 25 years, what do you think their impact has been, not just on women's soccer, but on women's sports? Um, well, first of all, I'm personally stoked. They know that. I, I like. They were ro my role models as an English girl, and not because I could watch the game live. I couldn't. We only had, like, four channels back then. But... Um, because I've said this before, my father was the original 96 and 99 a fan. And he taught me a lot about that team. And I remember watching the game much later on with my dad. Um, for me, it's, of course, the iconic, you know, images from Brandy's penalty to... I have this really good, cool picture I use with the team, which is the team on the podium and that ridiculous crowd are, like, unbelievable. And across it, I put a quote, people uh, don't remember time, they remember moments. And that's what I remember. And, of course, coming to the country in 2001 and thinking, you know, Mia Hamm was, at the time in England... You know, they'd have their own male equivalent, certainly not a female one. And to be coaching scores of young girls up and down the country who were obsessed with that team, the, that was just so... That, for me, the legacy is always what you leave in all the young people. Um, and I think that it's really amazing opportunity for our team, our current team, to have these, you know, these moments, these interactions... They're very, very special and certainly one that I will celebrate. We had... Go ahead, Sean. Sean Sucker, Long Island Magazine. Have you heard from any past Long Island Rough Riders or Lady Riders since you've been here? Will they be coming to the game? Have they touched base with you? Well, first of all, thanks for the scarf. I really appreciate it. I've got such fond memories of being with the Lady Riders. I know Kim Wyant will be here. Um, very excited to see her. Kim taught me so much. I was so young and so naive 
and so yet yeah, ambitious, hungry. And I remember being 25 while Kim was 37, the back end of her career. She was also my boss and my goalkeeper. And I was, as I said, extremely naive. But I'm so grateful to Kim and everything she taught me. Um, I know she will be here. One of my best friends who played for the Rough Riders, a girl called, she was an outstanding player in Long Island, a girl called Laura Ferry, um, Laura Martin. Um, but all the, I'm, I mean, I saw Cindy Sparrow the other day. I saw a lot of the girls and they're often sending good luck messages. So some will be here. I know that much. So some of my uh, Iona girls too, the girls I coach there, I can't wait to see them and their families. Go ahead. Party of Catchery, CBS Sports. Um, it This feels like the first job you've ever started where you haven't really had that resource gap where you haven't you know, had to fight for, you know, equal treatment or anything like that. What has it been like getting into a job where that sort of thing isn't really on your radar? Well, you can see the smile on my face, thank goodness. Uh, it's exhausting. Um, so um, especially those English journalists in the room will probably note that I look a lot happier as a result of not having to fight sometimes the things that, yeah. I don't want to. Um, I think for me, the important things are like put my energy where it matters most. And that is not just to uphold the traditions of the program and to build upon the legacy. But I hope that my work will go beyond this team and go towards the foundation for the future and to put those building blocks in place. That's where I suspect my energy will be beyond winning. So I'm, I'm grateful to be back to just doing football, uh, that's for sure. But however, I will advocate if it's appropriate and I don't ever want to change that narrative for this team either. That's what makes them all amazing women. So I will stand side by side with them if needed. And you'll see the size of her staff when you go outside, all the red <laughs> shirts. Uh, we have one online. Sylvia, go ahead. Good morning, Emma. Um, I'm just going to pivot slightly. I just have a question around your philosophies around leadership. I know this come up in your very short stint here uh, with the U.S. national team. But what is it in terms of qualities that you look for for leadership, both in terms of leadership that already exists and players and staff or anyone else that you might want to take that role in the future? And then two, who are some of the leaders that you've looked to inside or outside of sports? Thank you. Um, well, first of all, it starts with me. I have an executive coach that works with me while I'm in camp. So I'm being coached the whole time. That same coach is coaching Lindsay too. So we, she mirrors those things and we develop her leadership. And First of all, understand you know who she is as a leader. Two, get her key performance indicators right, and three, to offer her support when she's going to need it. So, for me, leadership is is you're not just born with it. It has to be learned. There's skills you have to develop to be able to bring the best out in people, and that is a job in and of itself. So, I hope that. Lindsay and I get the support we need to be our best. And then from there, developing, you know, outward of that, you know, the people in and around, you know, the captain that represents the group and reflects their needs, that she will have a leadership group in and around her. But it's player-led. And then I think just doing all the things that really matter, the team creating their team charters so they, you know, have a set of guidelines that matter most to them. And as I've said so many times, whatever the players do, the staff mirror. So I do a lot of stuff where it's side by side, like it's not team and staff, it's, it's us. And if I expect a certain level of standard and behaviour from a player, I expect exactly the same as staff. So I like this part of it, actually. To your point earlier, I've got back to like doing a lot of the leadership work I really enjoy. So... Um, in terms of role models, everyone, so many, 
so many. You'll see a few on the field today. Go ahead. Uh, Ella Brockway from the Washington Post. A lot has happened since the last time this U.S. team faced Mexico in mm -hmm. February. How have you seen this team and this group progress since that result? Well, in a number of ways. I was almost grateful for that result and performance personally because I was like, great, need it. Um, could interject and put the right things back into place for that. And um, There's no losing, there's only learning. And I think there's been a lot of that since then. And I know the players are very excited tomorrow, not because it's Mexico, but because it's another opportunity for us to demonstrate the things that we have learned and developed since then. Last one, we're going to go across the pond to our, our friend Richard Laverty. Go ahead, Richard. Hey, Emma. Hope hey, you're Rich. Well. Um, I was speaking to Tracy Kevins the other day, and she was talking about how this is probably one of the youngest Olympic squads the USA has had in, in some time. I just wondered at this point of the cycle, like how much do you look at the here and now when selecting your squad and winning a gold medal and, and how much you also look in further ahead? Let me be clear, I'm not here to make the numbers up. Like, first and foremost, I'm here to compete. And everybody here is here on merit. Yes, maybe less experienced, but they're here on merit. So part of my job is to, you know, prepare them properly, but also give them the opportunities. And I've said it many, many times. You can't do that if you don't play them. <laughs> and... Yes, probably COVID played a major impact in there being a less development for less experienced players and tournaments being back to back. But I don't want to waste time. I want to progress this group. And I genuinely believe this country has so many top players. Um, and there's top players that are not in this squad that we could probably produce two teams at a world-class level. So... I need to get about developing them and see how they cope at the highest level. And, yeah, looking forward to them. All right. Thanks, Emma. Cheers. We'll get everybody into the mix zone and we'll get some players.